everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I will be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about plants. Topic for the day is going to be signal transduction in plants. I'm going to tell you now this is going to be a review from when we talked about cell signaling several months ago. So just take it as a re review and try to apply it to plants using the example that we're going to talk about today. So let me get you your objective and we'll get going. Just one today. Objective for the day is to use D <clears throat> one more time use deetwilation in plants to explain the signal transduction process. Lots of ten dollar words there, so let's talk about a couple of them. First word you need to know is etwilation, and this is essentially the process that plants go through when they are growing in the dark. If you've ever left a potato in a cupboard or something and it started to sprout the little white sprouts out of its eyes, that is etwilation. It's an adaptation plants have for growing in the dark, particularly underground. Um, in etwilation, plants uh, shoots, their stems grow very rapidly, leaves don't really develop, they don't turn green, so all the growth is focused on getting stems and stuff to elongate so that they might eventually get above the soil. This adaptation is for particularly for plants that start out underground and have to get their roots and their shoots up above the ground. And then once they get above the ground, there's some changes in the plant, in the plants that we will talk about. So know this word etwilation. That just means the um, situation where a plant is adapted for growing in the dark. Uh, quadrant D down there shows an example of some plants that are currently in the stage. Now, Obviously, all the plants on Earth don't look like this. When plants get above the soil and are struck by light, a series of changes happens in them, and we're going to talk through that process because it's a good process to use for illustrating the signal transduction process in plants. So we got our plant. It's growing underground. It is lengthening. Finally, one of those poor, pale, white little shoots makes it above the surface of the soil. As soon as it makes it above the surface of the soil, it is struck by light. And this is the first phase of the signal transduction process. It is known as reception. If you remember back to when we were talking about cell signaling, reception is where a receptor, obviously, receives a stimulus and then starts to transmit it all over the place. So for plants and for this process of de which is plant turning green and developing leaves and all that, the receptor that we are worried about is called a phytochrome. Okay, this is an example of phytochrome right here. Phytochrome's whole purpose is to receive light stimuli. So once that little stem makes it above the soil, light strikes it. The light is received by a phytochrome. That is your reception phase of the signaling process. And that phytochrome is going to set off a whole series of actions in our cell that is going to lead to the greening process. So step one, reception. Step two is transduction. We're just going to kind of walk our way across this diagram here. So once our phytochrome has received its stimulus, remember usually when a receptor receives a stimulus, it changes shape, causing some sort of other change in the cell. When our phytochrome gets its signal, it sets off two second messengers. If you remember from back when we talked about this last time, second messengers are molecules that amplify a response and they make things happen more quickly in the cell. So our phytochrome sets off two second, manager, second messengers. The first one is CGMP and the second one is calcium 2 plus. So when this phytochrome gets struck and it gets struck by light and it sets off its pathway, um, channels open and the internal, the cytosolic concentration of calcium ions goes up quite rapidly. And the second messenger C, GMP, starts doing some work. Now, in this process, what they are doing is they are activating other proteins in the pathway and the proteins that they are activating are called kinases. Kinases are going to go along and add a phosphate group to other proteins down the road. And if you remember, adding a phosphate group or phosphorylating a protein usually activates it or turns it on. So these second messengers are going to activate a set of kinases that are going to go on to further activate other proteins. And final step in the process is the response. Now, there are two ways that response happens in this process. Um, the first way that response happens is to actually regulate these proteins right here, post-translational modification, which just means phosphorylation. All that means is you've got your existing proteins right here, your kinases, 
and your proteins are being phosphorylated, which means that they are being turned on into their active state. Now, if you remember, later on down the road, we're going to need to turn these proteins off. So a phosphatase will come through, knock off the phosphates that are stuck on these guys, and it will turn them off. So that is the first part of response is to actually turn the proteins on. The second part, and this is where we actually get the greening response happening, is the regulation of transcription of genes is actually specifically regulated. So in all cells, obviously you've got all the DNA for everything that happens in your body. If you're going to have each of those cells do specific things, then specific transcription factors need to be activated. It's kind of like pulling the right book off the library shelf. So all of these um, proteins that are being activated in the transduction phase are going to go on and they're going to activate specific transcription factors. So each of these transcription factors is going to go ahead and transcribe certain sections of DNA into mRNA. Remember messenger RNA. That mRNA is then going to leave our cell and be transcribed into a specific protein and the proteins that are specifically transcribed are going to play a role in deetylation, which is the greening of our plant. So just recognize that in this response phase, those proteins that were turned on are going to activate specific transcription factors. Each of those transcription factors is going to read and transcribe a specific gene within the nucleus of our cell. And finally, we get deetylation, where our sickly white looking plants that don't have any leaves or anything like that they're just built for getting up to the soil turn into nice green plants that carry out photosynthesis um, our nice green plants obviously their leaves open up to catch the sun their chlorophyll starts being produced so they turn green the roots start to grow down into the soil they become like real plants um, and that is all the result of this process that we just went through so Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. I hope that this little walk through signal transduction in plants was helpful. Make sure that you can talk about the example of DE twilation. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.